Hello everyone, this is Rick and thanks for joining. This tutorial is a overview of IP subnetting, uh, specifically IP subnetting with version 4 IP addressing. And I'm going to show you a tip or a trick here to uh, make your life a little bit easier when it comes to subnetting. So I'm going to jump right in here. And the first thing is as far as IP version 4 subnetting goes, an IP address is represented as four decimal integers. So this would be a typical IP address that you would see, 192.168.1.1, uh, real common on a home router or something like that. And then IP addresses are really um, 32 bits long. And so this is a decimal number converted from binary. So this 192.168.1.1 in binary is expressed like this. So you've got 8 bits, dot, 8 bits, dot, 8 bits, dot, 8 bits. So a total of 32 bits. Okay. So how this works is you need to convert from bits into decimals. Okay. So these binary into decimals. So with that said, here's how 192 would be calculated each bit is assigned a value here. So you notice I've got eight values in this table. So 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. And each time that you mark, it's either a 1 or a 0 here as a value. So if it's a 1, you're calculating the number. So for example, in this case, 192 written in binary format is 11000000. And what that means is you calculate the values of 128 and 64, anything with a 1 associated with it. 128 plus 64 is 192. Okay, subnet classes are divided up into, um, into different classes um, and they're really Class A would be very large uh, subnet space. Class B is very common, and Class C is what's used in, in most environments or assigned to individuals or corporations to use for internet advertisements or whatever. So this is just a real quick guide um, overview of showing you the ranges that are within those classes. There are also reserved subnets for for private use. Um, you know that that can be used by multiple corporations or individuals um, in, on internal networks. Okay, the other thing is, is there's other classes not listed here that are reserved for things like research and multicast addressing and things like that. So we're not going to get into that here though. So you've seen lots of subnet mask and you hear subnet mask referred to in many different formats. So you could have one labeled like this 255.255.255.0 or you might see it labeled as a slash 24 or a 24 bit mask and then this is the mask laid out in the 24 bits in the binary format so you've got eight ones dot eight ones dot eight ones dot all zeros and so that represents a 24 bit mask which which represents this number here and how that works is if you look at all these bits are marked as as ones so if we go back to our table here and we would have all ones across the board here we would have to add up all these associated values 128 64 32 16 8 4 2 and 1 that comes out to 255 so that's when you see this 255.255.255.0 255 .255 that's how it looks in a binary format and that's how someone might represent it um, if they're just showing you the number of bits in the mask. Okay, so that's what the slash 24 means. 8 bits, 16 bits, 24 bits, and then these will be the host over here. Okay, so subnetting tips and tricks. What I want to do is show you a quick and easy way to find subnets, and this comes in really handy without having to use a calculator and so forth. So, sample question that you might see. What is the subnet address, first usable address, and the broadcast address for IP address of 
168.5.12 slash 26. Okay, or they might list out the mask, you know, 255, 255 dot, and so forth. So what do we need to do here? The first thing we need to do here is step one, determine the decimal subnet mask for slash 26. So how do we do that? We calculate 26 bits here. So we have the eight dot, eight more bits dot, eight more bits. So now we're at 24 bits. Now we need to fill out 25th bit and 26th bit and then all zeros after that. So how that comes out, as we know, if all 8 bits are 1's, that's 255, 255, 255, dot, and then if we do look at these two bits, that's 128, if we refer back to the table, and that's 64, 128 plus 64 is 192. Okay, this is the trick I'm going to show you on the next page. What we're going to do is take the last decimal here and subtract it from 256 and that's going to give us 64 and this number could be 224 it could be 240 whatever the case is you'll see how this will work here in a second so what do we need to do here we need to calculate the subnets okay so how we calculate the subnets and the subnet is different from the individual IP addresses the subnet is the main subnet and then you have host um, within that subnet. So how do we do that? We subtract a 192 from 256. 256 minus 192 is equal to 64. So we know that subnet are in the ranges of 64. So this is how you use this little trick here is you do 256 minus the the last decimal value of 192 or whatever the appropriate decimal value is and that will give you the the ranges of subnets, so 64. So our original subnet was 192.168.5.12 was our host address. So our subnets are 192.168.5.0, 192.168.5.64, 192.168.5.128, so we're incrementing by 64 every time. And then finally 192.168.5.192 and then we stop there because if we want another 64, that would equal dot .256, right? Not a valid number. Eight bits can only tally up to 255. Okay, so finally, um, in order to figure this out, we need to calculate our subnet, our first available host, and a broadcast address. So again, these are our subnets that we've calculated. And remember that our initial host was 192. 168.5.12. That can't be, so what you can do is look at the subnets that you have available to you and you know it can't be on this subnet because dot .64 is a higher number than dot .12. It can't be on the dot .128 for the same reason. So it has to be on the dot .0 subnet. So if we look at that, 192.168.5.0 is our subnet. What's our first available address? It's always the first number after the subnet. So in this case 192.168.5.1 and then what's our broadcast address? It's always the last host before the next subnet. So in this case it's 192.168.5.63 and you see the next subnet's dot .64. So we can do a what if scenario here real quick and say what if the initial IP address was 5. Dot I'll change it change it real quick. 5.112. Uh, okay, so now our subnet would be in between a 64 and a 128. So this would be our subnet, 64, and our first available would be dot 65, and our and our broadcast address would be dot 127. Okay, so that'll work if you're doing 256 minus 240. You know what? You can use that in many different scenarios. And I hope this helps you. Uh, I don't know. If, you know, if you're studying for the CCNA, this is an easy way to um, you know to learn your subnetting and to find find the um, answers quick and easily. All right. The last thing I want to show you is you can always go to your calculator here, change your view to scientific. 
and if you put in a decimal, let's put in a decimal of 192 and then click on binary and it'll convert it for you. So 11000, uh, 11 and then six zeros. Thanks for joining and please subscribe and if you have any comments or suggestions, please go ahead and uh, drop me a note. Thanks, bye.